As intelligent and well-informed as most scientists are, you can't expect them to know everything. There are things in this world that can only be explained after years of careful study and research, and even then, you're sometimes left without satisfactory answers. We're not just talking about new phenomenons here, either. Even old and ancient mysteries have been known to leave scientists perplexed, like the ones you're going to see in this video. In Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, there's an ancient Mayan archaeological site called Ecbalam. It's far less famous than many of the Maya sites in the area, and far less visited because of that. But it may be far more mysterious. Despite being found in the 1800s, no proper archaeological surveys were carried out at Ecbalam until the 1980s. Even then, the surveys were limited, and so there's still much about the area that we don't know. One such mystery is the fact that the plaster on the tomb of former King Ukitkan Lektok, buried in a tomb in the side of Ecbalam's largest pyramid, is perfectly preserved. Finding a relatively well-preserved 1,300-year-old tomb isn't necessarily a rarity, but finding one with plaster that looks like it was applied yesterday is. Evidence at the site suggests that Ekbalam was at its peak during the 8th century and began to enter a steep decline by the 11th, but nobody has any idea why people left it so quickly, or why it eventually became entirely abandoned. This is a place that obviously merits further study, so we wish someone would turn up and do it. While we're in the Americas, let's move on down to Peru and check out Yurakrumi. It's an ancient carved megalith, which is a nice way of saying it's an enormous rock that was carved for reasons that we don't understand. Not every side of Yurakrumi is carved or engraved, so a few archaeologists believe that it was abandoned in a state of partial completion. Views of the rock taken from above appear to support that conclusion. Historians have no idea what it might have become if it were ever finished. It's covered in holes of various sizes positioned at irregular intervals and steps that go up, down, left, and right, but never lead to anywhere useful. As if it wasn't strange enough, there's no sign of any tool work on the rock. In other words, we can't even see the slightest hint of the methods that were used to shape the stone. It's almost like it wasn't carved with chisels or stone tools at all. But as it's thought to be thousands of years old, it's hard to imagine what else it could have been tooled with. The whole artifact is a troubling enigma. Everyone's heard of the Great Wall of China. It's so big you can see it from space, and it's one of the world's most popular tourist destinations. You've probably never heard of the Great Wall of Siberia, though, and that's because nobody knew it was there until 2017. Archaeologists are totally mystified by it. They think it was built somewhere between two and 3,000 years ago, but they have no idea by who or why. Based on the design of the ancient fortification, it probably served a defensive purpose, guarding the Altai Mountains against attack from the steppes. It's more than 25 feet tall and 30 feet thick in places, but it's almost completely overgrown by trees and foliage. Not all of the wall is still standing. Part of it was destroyed by the Soviet Union by order of Joseph Stalin to create a czarist road, now known as Route M52. Further chunks of it have been lost as the nearby village of Suzga has expanded over the centuries. Numerous digs have been carried out close to the walls that still exist, but so far no clues about the builders have been found. Speaking of Russians, we should talk about this seemingly impossible human footprint left on a rock in Chistovodnoye in Primorsky Krai. It appears as if the imprint of a gigantic foot has been left in the middle of a boulder made of granite. If this were left by a person, they must have been almost unimaginably huge. The footprint alone measures almost five feet from heel to toe. Some scientists have claimed that this shape has been caused by natural erosion, but that's difficult to believe. Erosion can make familiar looking shapes at rocks, but the five toes at the top of the footprint are too precise to have been caused by weathering. One other possibility is that it was carved by human hands. But that begs the question of why? What would be the purpose of carving a footprint? And why would anyone choose to do so using granite as a material? It's hardly the ideal rock to shape and carve, 
It's impossible to date the rock, so we have no way of knowing whether the footprint has been here for decades, centuries, or thousands of years. Given how hard to explain it is, archaeologists would rather not try to think about it at all. If you were to visit the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, England, you'd find a very strange exhibit standing there prominently featured. It's called the Veld Blundel Prism, named after the archaeologist who found it during a visit to the country now known as Iraq in 1922. It's not especially large, just two feet tall and less than a foot wide, but the mystery it contains is huge. The inscriptions on the sides of the artifact are a list of Sumerian kings, some of whom are credited with impossibly long reigns. The last carved king into the stone is Sin Majir of the Essene dynasty, who ruled for 11 years between 3830 and 3820 years ago. Earlier on the list, though, there are kings who are credited with reigns of several centuries. One of them is even said to have sat on the throne for 3600 years, Historians are at a loss to explain these bizarre claims. Their best theory is that particularly significant or powerful kings are credited with abnormally long reigns as a metaphor for their greatness. Another idea is that the name of a king was passed down from father to son and viewed as a continuation of the same reign. Both are good theories, but we have no way of knowing whether either of them is correct. The remains of Saint Dacian, an ancient Roman martyr, are said to rest inside the relic chapel at the Church of the Most Holy Redeemer in Manhattan, New York. Whether they do or not is another story. Any attempt to positively identify the remains is impossible because they're encased within a wax effigy of the saint next to the church's altar. The official story is that the martyr's remains were brought to America by a wealthy Italian woman but she donated them to the church in 1892 as a way of preventing the Italian government from seizing them and forcing their return to Italy. The church has an unusually large collection of what are said to be the remains or personal possessions of other saints, which has led some people to suggest that some, or even all, of the artifacts are fakes. In the case of Saint Dacian, there are rumors that the remains actually belonged to a policeman who was shot while trying to prevent a burglary at the church during the early 20th century. The church strenuously denies this suggestion, but until they let scientists come and take a closer look, the rumors will never go away. Mysteries aren't always kept hidden in churches or away from prying eyes of the general public. Sometimes they hide in plain sight like the so-called Man Mound in Baraboo, Wisconsin, USA. A road has been built right through the middle of this gigantic earthen feature, which is both a little rude and a little inconvenient for the archaeologists who'd like to know more about its origins. Nobody really knows where the figure came from, but archaeologists all agree that it's definitely human-made. The figure, of which there's little left today other than the legs and head, is probably a relic of the Mound Builder civilization. They're a culture we know so little about that we've named them after the mounds they built because they're the only thing we know them for. The Man Mound, like the rest of their earthen structures, is at least 1,000 years old and is a mystery even to the Native American tribes who live in the area. To add to the intrigue, the head of the figure depicted here appears to have horns. That might indicate a bison headdress or it might indicate that this is a depiction of a demon. It's now an American national landmark. Is the famous monument known as the Balanced Rock in North Salem, New York, USA, a human-made sculpture or a natural phenomenon? Don't look at us for an answer. We don't know, and nor does any scientist or archeologist who's ever studied it. The way the enormous boulder balances precariously on several smaller stones underneath it looks too perfectly engineered to have happened by accident. But glacial deposits can sometimes create such works of majesty. Local legends say that the rock was put in place by druids around 1,000 years ago, but that's impossible. It's almost certain that druids were once fascinated by it, but they weren't responsible for creating it. 
While the question of how the boulder came to be in this position can't be answered by scientists, they can at least say that it's looked like this for at least 10,000 years. It's long been the subject of mystery and wonder. We know that because there's graffiti on the side of it that's been dated to the 18th century. The Musée d'Aquitaine in Bordeaux, France, was built on the site of a convent that once housed the tomb of Michel de Montaigne. Montaigne, a prominent French philosopher, is a hugely significant figure in the history of Bordeaux, having served as its mayor during the 1580s. Historical records say he was buried in the tomb in 1592, but they also say that his remains were moved around several times after he died. Because of that, archaeologists have never been able to say with any certainty where his body ended up, or at least not until now. In September 2020, human remains were found in the basement of the museum. The bones have been confirmed as belonging to an adult male and were inside a wooden coffin with the philosopher's name etched onto the lid. Further tests will have to be carried out on the skeleton before scientists can be sure about the occupant of the coffin, including carbon dating. But it now appears likely that his remains have been in the first place they were buried for all this time. It's a little odd that they've never been found before, but it makes for an excellent new exhibition for the museum. You can find ancient stone circles all over the world. Almost every ancient civilization built them at some point in their early development, and nobody really knows why. We have some pretty nasty suspicions about the stone circles in the Gobi Desert in China, though. According to a new study, they were erected several thousand years ago by an ancient culture of sun worshippers, and might have been a place where human sacrifices were carried out. Despite their size and their relatively good state of preservation, the circles weren't discovered until 2003. That might as well be yesterday in archaeological terms, so studies to determine their origin are still ongoing. It's been noted that they're similar in design to a few stone circles in Mongolia, and it's already been proven that human sacrifice went on at the Mongolian stone circles, so it's logical to assume that the same happened here. Experts believe that the monuments have been standing for around 4,500 years. Some of the stones don't occur naturally anywhere in the desert, so the mystery of where they came from is as great as the mystery of their purpose. Our current human species is called Homo sapiens, but there were many ancient hominids who came before us. Some of them even lived side by side with us for a while. One such species, the Red Deer Cavemen of China, might actually have survived for much longer than we once thought they did. Recently, a thigh bone belonging to a red deer caveman was found in China and has been dated to around 14,000 years ago. That means the species survived until the end of the last ice age. Rather than being found in a cave, the bone was among the collection of a museum in Yunnan, where it had been mislabeled and untested since its discovery in 1989. It's similar to the bones of Homo habilis, who lived on Earth over one and a half million years ago. Prior to this surprising discovery, it had long been thought that the last pre-modern human species on Eurasia was the Denisovans, who were confined to one small region in Siberia and died out 40,000 years ago. The Red Deer Cave People are still a controversial topic among archaeologists and scientists because the first evidence of their existence wasn't found until 2012. So there are many who'd like more research to be carried out before making any definitive statements about age. The most famous pyramids in the world are the ones you'll find in Egypt, but there are several other pyramids elsewhere on the planet that are also well known. The Fan Pyramid in Tenerife is not among them. If it were better known, Perhaps more effort would have been made by now to learn its origin and its function. This step pyramid might have been made by the region's Navid Guanche people around 2,000 years ago as a solstice marker of some kind. But that's just a pet theory that archaeologists are kicking around while they try to come up with a better idea. 
the placement of the pyramid, and its smaller companion pyramids, is perfectly aligned to help identify the date of the summer and winter solstices, which probably isn't a coincidence. But making pyramids purely for this purpose seems excessive. Even if we accept that they're solstice markers, it's likely that they also had another purpose. They weren't tombs, so what else might they have been? If you can work out the answer to that question, you'll be able to claim your place as one of the world's greatest historians. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.